here this afternoon with Joanne Sykes, head of MFL here at Great Ballard. Joanne, afternoon. Thank you. And we're in a special bit of the school, a bit that some of our pupils would remember as a dormitory. This is actually Vanguard, which will almost certainly be our maths room next year up here in this part of the senior school. These are some of the classrooms with the most beautiful views in our school. And Joanne will be one of the teachers that will benefit. So Joanne, you must be excited about coming up here. Very excited to see my new classroom. And I think it's got a lovely view up across the hill. Fantastic, and actually if we listen carefully, we might even hear the sound of your classroom because I think your classroom across the way is being developed yeah, as we speak. So all our year sevens to year nines will have all their lessons up here, or most of their lessons up here. Um, and it'll make a difference. What do you think it will be like on this corridor with just our senior pupils? I think um, the pupils that are here at the moment are really excited about moving up here. They've taken a look around, they've done a tour, and they've seen the new common rooms. And there is a real exciting um, sort of buzz about coming into this main building. And you mentioned the common rooms. I think you're right. This is the only classroom on this floor that won't have an attached common room space. It's actually next to the new staff room, so probably not quite the same thing. But the students are looking forward to that. Are you looking forward to a role as a tutor? Teaching in lessons, obviously you get to know the pupils on, a, on an academic level, but actually being a tutor means you get to know that a little bit more about them, you know, what they do at the weekend, their interests, and that really feeds into teaching. I think at Great Ballard, one of our strengths is we can really tailor the academic journey of the pupils by getting to know them really well pastorally. Yeah, great spaces for that, but also definitely a centre for learning. That's mm. an important aspect. Now, your subject or subjects, I think, you know, we, we would have thought of it as French or Spanish or something different, and we, we're turning it MFL today. And that actually reflects that you have a lot of different interests and a lot of different languages. So French and Spanish will uh, be our main offering here at, at Great Ballard. And students were able to choose to tailor their own language learning journey according to their interests, their own motivations, um, how they learn um, and uh, when they get into senior school if they'd like to study both they can study French and Spanish, they can um, narrow it down and focus on their main interest um, and low down in the school as well but I'd like to keep it as broad an offering as possible as well. To take two languages that's, that's a large chunk of curriculum so I guess the obvious thing to ask the head of MFL is why should children learn languages at all? What's the point for them? Building relationships, being able to communicate um, in your own language and learning another language really helps build literacy in your own language. But just getting out there in the world, communicating with other people, getting on their level and building empathy helps you meet new people, build relationships, um, opens up job opportunities. And when you're traveling, if you can speak to somebody in their own language when they're in their country, it just opens up your understanding of other people in the world on such a different level. So you are widely travelled with many stories, and I think we're going to play a game later that might bring out some of those tales and stories. But it definitely felt to me that you felt that languages was a way of opening up the world for mm -hmm. young people. Yeah, on many different levels, and I think it also teaches um, resilience. And I think sometimes um, we have such a lovely um, atmosphere at Great Ballard, you know, very... Um, um, caring pers personal sort of journey that the students go on especially with our the pastoral side that we have here we get to know our students really well and it is a lovely place to be but there is a big world out there and I want to be able to open that up to the students while they're here at Great Ballard um, so in lessons um, we do a lot of cross-curricular learning so bringing in geography and history um, also, I'd like to start taking the students out on trips again, which obviously mm -hmm. at the moment, as we've been locked down, that's not been possible. Um, but even a day trip over to Paris is possible. It would be a joy, wouldn't it? It feels like a bit of another world now to be talking about doing things like yeah. that. But actually, the students were only asking me this week about trips overseas. Yeah. You know, we hope that we can put those you know, back mm -hmm. in. And in talking about your interests, now you, you've developed interests, I think, based on your it, it, passion for the world. And they're not just based around languages. There are elements of politics and things that you'd like our children to know more about. Well, obviously I teach um, PSHE as well here at Great Ballard and um, one of my jobs in a previous life was working for the government in uh, equality and human rights issues. So I have a real passion for bringing, again, the real world, the real live world out there into the classroom. So pupils get a chance to think about real life issues that affect them and the people they know and a chance to discuss sort of everything around them, what's happening in the world of politics, what's happening in their relationships with their friends and their family. So Joanne, what things do you think we can specifically do here at Great Power that are going to help our students to reach out, to experience more of the real world? 
One thing I'd really like to do is bring politics alive for the students um, and with my experience working in, in central government um, I want to use that to um, show pupils where it really happens, the exciting um, real life politics that happens up in Parliament in London. So to take them up to Westminster and give them a tour of the Houses of Parliament, the Commons, um, the Lords and it's, it's a real buzz when you go up there, you really feel like I'm here where it's all happening. There's um, politicians being interviewed, there's people flying around. You really get a feel for this is where it's happening. And I'd like the pupils to really see um, where um, things are done that affect their everyday lives. So we're gonna finish with a little game, as promised. We're gonna go around the world, as befits someone who has many languages. So uh, your travels around the world, we've put a number of places that you've visited. All you have to do is tell us a very brief story from each of them, okay. two minutes, to take us around the world. Your two minutes start now. Okay. Uh, Nepal, I went trekking the Annapurna circuit and I met a Maoist rebel. La France, um, wonderful place and I'd love to take the pupils there on a day trip on the Tunnel Sous la Manche to visit Paris for the day and see the Eiffel Tower. Japan, I lived there for a couple of years. Um, I went skiing in the northern island of Hokkaido. Fantastic place. I've, I've heard a little bird told me you might, oh, I'm sneaking your time here. A, bit, a little bird told me you might be teaching the staff some Japanese. Oh um, yes, I'd love to do that on an inset day. Nice. And also potentially have a Japanese after school club. Skiing in Canada as well. As you can see, I like to You're quite active. Yes, definitely. Ecuador. Um, once I bumped into the president of Ecuador on a little trip to Isla de la Plata. Like you do. Yeah, had a little chat with uh, Rafael Correa. Spain, oh wow. Uh, I'd, when I just started learning Spanish, I went to Spain for the summer and um, I'd learned a phrase. Well, I was misusing a phrase and I kept saying to everybody, um, soy embarazada, which doesn't mean I'm embarrassed, it means something very different. What does it, what does it mean? Uh, I'm pregnant. Good one to end on, Yorkshire. Um, it's a country, um, country. Yes, I love a bit of Yorkshire pudding and there is a movement for the independence of Yorkshire that it should be its own country. Um, I think as a, one of the Olympics it won that many medals, I think being its own country it would have won the Olympics. Um, so I'm very proud to be. So thank you very much Joanne. One You're last thing then. That was really fun. Anywhere in the world, right now, you could transport yourself to, where will it be? And you know that would say Great Ballard, that would be cheesy. Um, Mexico. Um, I went there on my year out from university um, when I was about 20 years ago and I haven't been back and it's such a wonderful place, I would love to go there again. Once you can. <laughs> Once I can. Brilliant, well thanks very much for your time. Thank you.